So you know how I'm always talking about building a bunch of cool axles for the Samurai and I just never do it? We're doing it. Finally taking the Dana 70 apart. Oh. So I think what happened was this guy sold me this Dana 70 because he ran into the same problem I ran into. It's the wrong one. With this offset pinion on the 3HD, you can only run a few different gear ratios. It's pretty much useless for a rock crawler because you need something that's way lower than 410. In my case, I'm going to the max 717. Can't run them in this housing because the pinion offset is way more than a normal HD. So we're exploring some ways to get that fixed. I think what happened is the guy took the thing apart, trying to put some better gears and carrier in there, like a locker. And then he realized it wasn't going to work. He did a really crappy job putting it back together and then sold it to me. So we're, we're pulling these bearings off and they're coming off really easy. Like nothing was put back together right on this thing. So I'm sure we're gonna have some fun surprises. Got the Dana 70 rear torn apart. It's very easy. It's very similar to what you'd expect with a 14 bolt. A lot of the stuff looks like it, it might be the same, but the cool thing about these axles, like a 14 bolt, it's full float. So if you have an issue with say your carrier or an axle shaft breaking, something like that, you can just pull it out really easy just take a bunch of bolts out and the shaft just slides out so we're setting those to the side and the next thing we're going to do is start working with the hubs and the brakes so i was able to find a lug nut 4x4 kit used on craigslist went and picked those up i got a really good deal on it basically half price because the guy wasn't building his 70 anymore so now we have some big old discs to put on these hubs we've got some brackets some brake lines and now we just need to put it all together big old carrier out of there that's the stock one that's open here's what she looks like with everything torn off her everything is relatively clean on this this is what the hub assembly looks like when it's off this is the outside this is the side that faces the axle housing and usually there would be a big old drum on here but we're getting rid of that we're going with these big old discs big i'm used to working with the jeep and the samurai so these are like giant to me now it's been a while since i worked on some one ton stuff some of these kits the disc comes on and lays right over the top i don't really care for that version kind of like the samurai they kind of sit loose on there you've got to tighten down your wheel to get everything snugged up these ones actually mount the opposite way so you got to flip the hub upside down and then the disc sits on top like that so what we have to do is line up all the holes and then we've got to drive our studs through there so this was actually a kind of a time consuming part figuring out what studs to get when i got this axle it didn't have any drums any studs anything that's a big problem because i didn't know which ones to get normally the stock ones would work but we've got this extra thickness that they've got to go through right here to get into the hub basically i had to make sure that the knurled part was long enough to where it would engage in the hub after passing through the rotor the other part was i had to make sure that the threads were long enough to where i could get a lug nut on after that and the last part the wheel stud has to be able to pass through the rotor freely, can't be pressed in there. And then the neural part has to be engaged enough in the hub to where it's not gonna move. So one of the tips that Rough Stuff gives is make sure you, if you're gonna use a bigger wheel stud, make sure you drill out your hub so you can actually fit them in there. I didn't do that. I, I've actually had a couple bad experiences where the wheel studs tight enough in there. When I start to torque down the lug nut, they'll start to spin a little bit and then you have to take everything apart again. So a big problem, I didn't wanna deal with it this time. So I'm not drilling them out. I tried to hammer them in with a sledgehammer and um, basically just a bolt that I had laying around. I couldn't get them to seat all the way. So we're running over to the press. I do have the pneumatic upgrade for the Harbor Freight press, but it's uh, after work right now. It's getting dark and all that. And I don't want to run the air compressor. It's really loud. I don't want to piss off all my neighbors. So we're going to do it the pump style. Start pressing them through there. Caliper mounting brackets. This one does not match up with the holes on the axle. Sent these with it too. So I think those ones are from rough stuff. And then this one's from lug nut four x four. All 
All right, so here's everything kind of just mocked up. You can see it's all loose on here. I've just got it mocked up. The bracket isn't attached to the axle in any way, so there's actually a fair amount of slop in it. Like, it doesn't seem like it has to be, like, dead on. So I think what I'm going to do is try to align these holes as best I can, and then I'll probably just end up welding some on the tube right here. I think we could weld it on. I'd much rather have a bolt-on kit, but I'm going to have to drill through some 3 8 plate four times each side. That doesn't sound like a lot of fun to me. I think I can take care of it just by welding. Caliper brackets welded on. Definitely more than enough weld on there. It's looking good now. Um, we've got semi-gloss black from Rust-Oleum. You gotta do it. I mean, it's the cheapest, easiest way to do it. Paint all my axles and suspension stuff. Rust-Oleum semi-gloss black. I'd open the door to the garage. Just feeling a little happy all of a sudden in here with all this paint going around. We next will just, I'm gonna mount the brakes on there for now. We've gotta chop off the spring perch, the pad and the shock. How did I get so much grease on me? I swear, it's like giving a cookie to a little kid and they get all over their face. Well, maybe that's a bad example because I'm not eating the grease. Well, not a lot of it. Got all the brakes and everything on. Never did paint the hubs because, well, I forgot. Everything is lining up good. Uh, we might need to do a little bit of shimming on the calipers because these are pretty stiff on the rotors. So yeah, we might have to change that up just a little bit. All right, time for the next hurdle in the Dana 70 build. The offset on the pinion for the Dana 70 3HD is the largest offset they have for the Dana 70 and that is the reason why there aren't a lot of gear sets available for that model so people will mistakenly get this axle like I did and they think it's good to go and um, it's not because that pinion is so far away um, there's only so many ratios available I'm gonna do the 717 but how do we make that work if I have the HD carrier I need to put it into a 3 HD so what I ended up doing was getting a hold of Carl at Jantz Engineering up in Washington State he does a bunch of stuff with axles that you're not supposed to do and he built some super strong Dana 44s all in the hopes of making these axles stronger with these modifications so I thought it was a long shot you know this guy's probably way too busy to be dealing with some garage wrencher like me but I just called him he answered and he said he's semi uh, retired now he doesn't do a lot of work on this kind of stuff but he does like taking these side projects every now and then so he decided to work with me which i'm super thankful for and um, what we need to do is find a way to make a spacer for our, my dana 70 hd carrier so it brings that ring gear a little bit closer to the pinion that is offset so much so the ring gear would sit on this right here and the problem is it's not far enough up carl thinks we can make a spacer that'll make up that difference but see this part right here it's like this shoulder kind of centers the ring gear onto the carrier if you don't have something like that to where you press it on and have it be like an exact fit there's some movement there and like if you tried to use these holes only there'd be too much movement and that ring and pinion gear set is just going to disappear like that even on a little samurai what he's going to do is probably weld some material on this part of my locker it's not this this is a stock carrier and um, then he's going to machine it down so this shoulder is just higher and then he's going to put the sing the ring gear on there and it should be nice and snug hopefully that is going to fix this last issue so yeah this this totally sucks i was hoping to just put these brakes on put these gears in and just have it ready to go into the samurai but you know that's how stuff goes sometimes i think a lot of people probably would have given up i think the guy that sold me this dana 70 um, knew it was the 3HD. He took it apart, realized it was the wrong one, and sold it to me. I told him what I was gonna do. He knew the plan, and you know what? I'm not gonna dwell on it. I got it for like 300 bucks, so it wasn't a bad deal. Um, usually these HDs are six to 700 out in my area, so I still got a good deal there. Um, I'm not sure how much it's gonna cost for the spacer, a couple hundred bucks. And then my latest thing is now it's too expensive to ship it up there. The carrier, and I put the ring gear on there too, just so you know there was no guesswork for Carl. UPS says $150 to ship it out of my budget, man. Now we're really getting up there. So that'd be 300 round trip for it. The axle's just been getting really expensive. So um, Carl had a great idea though. He said, why don't you tear the Detroit locker carrier in half? Cause it breaks in half with the locker in the middle. And that'll take the weight way down. 
I got a quote from UPS that said it would be um, $60 if I could get the weight to 40 pounds. And I think I can do less than that. So we're going to take it apart. Um, the problem with this locker taking it apart is they use a giant arbor press to do it or like a huge um, shop press. You could do it too. Mine's not big enough to fit it in there and it doesn't have enough movement because the springs inside the locker uh, need about five inches on each side. So 10 inches total play and the springs have 200 pounds of resistance on them. That's what they told me at Eaton. I called them and they were pretty concerned. They were like, dude, be careful taking that thing apart. And I just had to find a way to do it. Both Carl and Eaton recommended doing it the same way, getting some threaded rod and then some heavy washers and then tightening them down. Once you do all the undo all the carrier bolts, just slowly let it out until all of the pressure is gone. So that's what we're gonna give a shot. I've got my safety glasses, my safety mustache. That's all I got. I wish I had a cup or something to wear, but if it explodes, you know, tell everyone I love them. is the Dana 70 HD Detroit locker all broken down. So this is the uh, locking mechanism. This is where the 35 spline shafts go in right there. So I'm gonna go to a UPS store and hopefully it is cheap to ship it up there. It's just the half now, so it should be um, pretty simple. I haven't weighed it or anything. Um, I'm pretty confident it's around like 20 pounds. It's really not heavy at all now. So hopefully it's not a lot to ship up there. As of filming this video, I have a line on a Dana 60, a Chevy Dana 60. Um, there's a guy in Sacramento who's gonna sell me one. Um, decent price and seems like a nice dude. He threw in some other stuff too, some steering stuff. So looking forward to that. The more I think about getting this Samurai one ton, the more excited I get about it. Can't wait. We've got stuff coming for the Jeep. So there's probably gonna be a little bit of Jeep stuff going on before you back to the Samurai, but it's all good. It's always wrenching and it's all leading to some good wheeling. Thanks for checking out this video, guys. If you have any tips for me, uh, please put them down in the comments. I read all the comments and I know there's a lot of really experienced guys out there. So if you got some stuff to keep me out of trouble, I'd love to hear it. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.